Okay, YouTube, so I wanted to make this video talking about something that's uh, really very dear to my heart. Um, I've actually shot film for over 30 years, and uh, lately, I guess, uh, everyone and their brother is coming out of their shell and wanting to make videos on film because they're realizing um, the power of film and, and where it comes from and the history of uh, companies like Fujifilm and things like that. And, and where do they all come from? Kodak, all, all these different ones that are out there. Um, and companies, you know, such as uh, camera manufacturers, uh, Canon, Minolta, Nikon, um, all different ones and, and sort of their history. Um, so looks like there are a lot of people on YouTube that are looking to make videos on this subject um, and they don't even shoot film today. Uh, they used to, but they don't anymore. Um, not saying that's a good or bad thing. Uh, I think when you shoot it side by side with digital today, it makes you really realize how awesome film really was. Um, and, and that's why I think a lot of people are realizing today um, what, they, what they've been missing all this time. So we, we've ran in down this, this digital age into wanting to get the highest megapixels and this and that and the other. Well, there was a recent article published uh, um, within a week um, of me making this video. Um, that clearly states that, that a 35 millimeter negative, which looks like this, right, um, has as much information as a 180 megapixel sensor. So when people get really excited about um, Fujifilm, all these you know companies introducing medium format cameras at 50 megapixel, 60 megapixel, that's fantastic. But imagine if 35 millimeter is at, um, you know, close to 180 megapixel. Imagine what medium format is on film. So we're not even a third of the way there when it comes to uh, the true resolution and the potential of, of what's captured on film versus what, what we are trying to do on digital. Uh, the other um, major issue has been is, uh, like I mentioned before, a lot of people want to talk about it, but they don't practice it. They don't practice what they preach. They don't shoot it. If you don't shoot it, you can't really speak about it intelligently uh, to know the differences. Uh, folks like Ted Vera, you know, and, and uh, Eric Klaus, uh, very, very good subscriber and a very good friend from from Europe, he, he, Eric has been pushing me to do videos on like the Canon F1 uh, and the F1N, the A1s uh, that, that, were, that were built. Um, why? Because I still shoot them. Uh, most people have no clue what those cameras are and how great they were. Um, so when we, when we keep pushing this, this digital war, we're really forgetting where we're coming from. Um, is film really a pain in the butt? I don't know, it really depends on you, right? Um, the beauty of film is, you know, once you shoot it, you process it, you're pretty much done. I mean, you can scan it and then make some tweaks if you really wanted to, but most of the times you don't have to because it already looks beautiful coming out of there. But digital is very different. You shoot it raw, it looks beautiful on the back of the screen, you get it in the Adobe or where whatever software you use and when they're raw, kicks in and you look at those colors, you're like, holy smokes, what happened? Well, you know, re it, it, it's reality hits you at that point. And, you know, nothing against Fujifilm. Their, their camera's outstanding. I own tons of them, um, you know, on their X-Mount. Um, but when you look in the back of your screen with that film simulation on, it looks beautiful. But when you shoot it raw and you bring it into Adobe, you're very disappointed because it didn't look like that in the back of the screen. Right? That's why most people shoot the JPEGs on Fuji because they already look beautiful and you want that same look to preserve it there and um, for some reason Fuji really hasn't gotten the full love that Adobe should be giving it um, for, for the quality of system that it is. Um, but again, you know, that's for Adobe to figure out and, and Fuji to figure out. So let's talk about film. What is film? Where does it come from? Okay, so I'm going to share with you what I shoot even today. You know. Uh, I don't have just like one camera body and I shoot one roll maybe a year or something like that. I shoot it very often. So I'm going to start with the, and again, keep in mind, I, I've sold 
all of my medium format stuff that I, that I used to have in the day, it's gone. Um, I am looking at acquiring a lot of that back again. Um, but we'll start again with, with what I really actually ended up keeping. Um, this is a Canon Canonet Junior. This is probably a camera that was made before most of us were born. Okay, it's fully functional, still works. I still shoot it. It's a rangefinder style camera, right? So you can see the gravitation towards X Pro One, X Pro Two, and things like that on the Fuji side of the house because that rangefinder is is very addictive, especially if you know how to maximize it to to your benefit. Anyway, so that's one. And then from there, we actually run down. And again, I'm a been predominantly a Canon shooter, so. The, the next big milestone, uh, well, Canon had many milestones. Um, the AE-1 uh, was huge for them. This is the A-1. This is an A-1 with the motor drive on it. Okay, this was the official camera of the US Olympics in 1984. I even have the 1984 Olympics bag that this came in. Um, and these things look mint. I still shoot them, you know, and they still fire. I don't think the batteries are in this one. No, it's not. I have another one, which is right here. Another A1, which I can probably fire for you. You can see it. This one has no squeal. This camera was known for having a shutter squeal, and this, these have all been uh, repaired to make sure they don't. Um, you can just see how beautiful that sounds, even today. So, um, that's the A1. And then from the A1, we gravitate into something that's uh, pretty remarkable. This is the mothership for Canon, which was F, the F1. This one has the data back on it with the prism removed from the top. So you could shoot it waist level if you wanted to. It doesn't get too much better than this. I'll fire a shot off on this one so you can hear the shutter. Um, because the other F1 that I have actually, F, these are F1Ns, so this is the new ones. Um, the older one had the timer dial here. I don't have that because I love the metering of this and, and I ended up selling that when this came out and just stuck with this. So you can just hear, you can actually see it happening here with the shutter opening and closing right through here. So. That's that one. I'll show you the other F1. This one's loaded with film right now. Okay, this has a 35 F2 concave lens. This lens was um, the lens that went up against uh, Leica, and and it actually beat Leica in the in the 70s and early 80s in in uh, bokeh and, and sharpness. Um, it was this and the Super Takumar 35mm 2.3. They were the largest contenders to, to Leica glass and they were the only people that could really stand up to Leica at that time. Um, so the the viewfinder I was talking about is this. It's This entire prism comes off on the F1. And you could get a sports one. This is an AE finder. Um, you can get a sports one, you can get all different ones that were available for the camera. Um, these cameras were very expensive <laughs> back in the day. Um, so, you know, it, it's truly a charm to even be able to hold one. Um, what you're hearing is a titanium shutter in this. Um, and they don't build stuff like that anymore. Um, the A1, um, the big difference between the A1 and the F1 is the A1 had aperture and shutter priority. Um, the F1 comes as a shutter priority, but when you put the booster on the bottom, it becomes an aperture priority and shutter priority. Um, so a lot of people don't understand that um, when they're actually owning these cameras on, on where they come from and how to shoot them correctly, and they get frustrated. So then we move into, um, I have two EOS film bodies that are out. The other two are actually packed away. Uh, so maybe in another video, I'll do that. Um, then Canon moved to this, which is the first EOS body. Um, this one is the 650, the 630 and 650 came out about the same time. This was the first autofocus camera that Canon built, one of the first ones. Uh, and this is what started that revolution of 
autofocus with the electronic shutter and an automatic winder built into it. I still shoot this camera today. Very simple, no gimmicks, works perfectly fine. No issues. And then we actually get into the EOS 3. The 1V is actually, like I said, it's, it's packed up. Um, it was the one that was above this. Um, the EOS 3, this had something that no other cameras had uh, ever since the, uh, you know, the end of this thing, when they stopped producing this, which was the eye control. The Elan 7E had it, and this has it. It actually tracks where your eye is looking into the camera and it focuses there. I really would love to see Canon bring this back. You know, um, you don't have to guess anymore, you know, where the heck to focus. The camera knows where you're looking and it focuses and it's dead on every time. Some of these pictures that you see online of uh, film that I've shot uh, of my wife doing photo shoots in the fall and stuff, they're actually shot on this camera uh, and the F1, uh, a lot of it. Um, so, you know, that's what you're seeing. Um, still fires today, um, no issues, um, well, the battery's dying in this one. I haven't used it in a little while. Uh, you can see it flashing there. So it just need, needs a new battery. Works perfectly fine. It's a beautiful camera. Um, it has the EOS 1D style button layout um, that they that they adapted later and into the EOS 1V and then into the 1D bodies, uh, which, are, which are the digital bodies. So why did I make this video, right? I made this video because, you know, I wanted to show you guys that I'm not just making videos based on theories and what I read on, you know, um, a, a website or, or, you know, in, in the, um, what do they call, Wikipedia and things like that and, and post pictures against my videos to show you what the camera really looked like. I shoot these cameras every day, okay? So you're not dealing with someone that just is trying to wing it um, by just making a video and trying to get YouTube likes. You don't have to like this video if you don't want to. That's fine. Uh, that's how I'm making this. I'm making this because people need to understand that there are lots of us out there, a lot of people that are out there that are shooting real film today. You know, it's not dead. It's still there. And it's very, very much alive. You know, you look at, um, I know Ted Vera posts a lot of his stuff. I don't post quite as much, um, but he does. Here, here's Acros inside this right now. Um, when this roll finishes, I'll put it out there. You guys can see it, what I shot with it. Um, so, you know, I, I do that because I want you guys to feel comfortable coming to the channel and being able to ask questions and know that you're not going to get swayed by, oh, well, you know, this week I'm getting sponsored by so-and-so and so, so I'm going to say whatever uh, and just make up stuff, uh, which is not true. And, and that's what I try to do with the EOSM and five video because <clears throat> people are just making stuff up and, and bad mouthing products that they know nothing about. Um, and and if, if these guys are really looking at making videos on film cameras, show me what you shot with it. Show me how many of them you own. Go look at their videos. They, they can't even show you one of these. They don't own them. You know, they're just going all off a of theory just to make a video. Why? Because it's a cool subject. I'm not doing that because it's a cool subject. I'm doing that because I want you to know that you can ask me questions about it, I can answer it. I can tell you how to use an F1. My <clears throat> next set of videos that, that, that I'm working on, uh, I need to plan them a little bit, is how do you use the F1N? Most people don't know how to use it, you know, especially the ones that own it. How do you use the A1, right? And, and how do you use the EOS 3? How do you meter for film? You know, how does it work? Overexposure, underexposure, push, pull, what does all of that stuff mean? Most people have no clue. The, the, the Fuji digital cameras have all of these concepts in them, okay? So I'm going to be very blunt and come out and say something. The Fuji X system is outstanding. Please don't take it the wrong way. It's amazing for what it can do in camera with the simulations that it does. However, it is not the same as shooting real film, okay? And, and it, it's very hard to replicate. You can put the biggest, baddest sensor in there and, and the biggest, baddest processor in there trying to do across. All I got to do is shoot across on here. There's there's no comparison. There really isn't. Um, it just it's just that much better because it's the real deal, right? I mean, the grain is it's just gorgeous. It looks just amazing. And on digital cameras, when you add grain, uh, it looks nice, but it's not film. 
Uh, it's a film look. It's it's a very close representation of it, but it's not it's not exactly the same. So just just understand that that's what you're buying, and that's okay. Nothing wrong with that. Um, you can tweak it, you know, to whichever way you like. Um, not saying what I'm doing is right. All I'm saying is this is what I do. I'm just sharing with you guys on what I do, especially on the film side, because a lot of people have asked because I've made comments, you know, um, film this, film that. Um, so I'm gonna save. Um, the last uh, 10 seconds or so for a camera for the Sony fanboys that are part of my channel there are lots of them and, and they're good 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 people this this is a camera that I've had for many years okay it's the Minolta all right and the lens on it if I take this filter off is pristine absolutely pristine I even had you know the 3m bottom done on this so you didn't scratch it's just it, it's just awesome absolutely awesome it looks almost brand spanking new even the shutter inside um, <clears throat> I am showing this last because I need the Sony boys to understand when I talk about film and, and where Sony's history is, just because you buy Minolta does not mean you understand what this is. You weren't even alive. Sony wasn't even born in the camera world when Minolta was making this and the glass that they made back then. They have no clue. They think they bought those engineers that, that are, that are going to give them what they put into these cameras here. It's not the same. Look at this product and look at what they're putting out today. That no comparison at all. Um, this just a this is just absolutely beautiful. I mean, it just it's gorgeous. It's just awesome to hold. Um, you know, so is this. You know, it's an absolute beast. You know, absolute beast. You can see all the brassing going on on the bodies, but they still function. Every single thing works. Um, and and you know, you got your Sony's, you got your some of your Fuji's with grips falling off and this and that they're not built the same and i used to have um the fuji i think it was a g680 the medium format um that that they made it, it was is one of the most beautiful cameras that you could own and and i probably will buy one of those and and a hasselblad back again or maybe a mamiya uh 645 af uh back uh which i had so you know would love to shoot those again um now that uh you know uh, I think I'm coming back to reality that, you know, I tried all the digital stuff. It's great. Will I still buy digital cameras? Yeah, absolutely. Um, but you know, the love and, and, and the true heart lies in, in, in what film has to offer. And, and I think it's going to be there for a very long time. Um, cause these guys have lasted 30, 40, 50 years. So, you know, definitely, um, they, they can, they can, they can outlast, uh, um, most human beings uh, if you if you take care of them so that's enough uh, it's about 18 minutes into this video just wanted to share that with you share your thoughts if you should film uh, would love to hear you know what you think and, and maybe share some ideas get some ideas and if you have a certain thing or topic within film photography that you'd like me to cover I'll be happy to do that for you guys talk to you guys soon